Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Scorcher, a futuristic racing game for the PC and the Sega Saturn. Uh, we actually did a Let's Play of the Sega Saturn version last year, uh, and today we're going to be doing a, a Let's Play of the PC version of the game. PC version is a lot nicer overall. It runs at 60 FPS at all times, assuming you've got the hardware capable enough to do so. Uh, it runs at 640 by 480, uh, which is twice the resolution of the Saturn version, and it has a couple of extra little minor features, some extra obstacles on the courses that you don't have in the Saturn version, as well as some extra graphical tweaks and things like that. A little more flexibility overall. There are some other uh, gameplay changes, though, or mode changes, I should say, and I'll talk about those uh, towards the end of the playthrough uh, after we go through the main campaign here. So we're actually running this on real uh, hardware, and this is a... Um my Windows 98 box I built at the end of last year. It has an Athlon XP 3000 Plus Series CPU, uh, 512 megs of RAM, and a Radeon 9550 256 meg um, GPU. So it's actually a pretty beefy system for something like Scorcher. Scorcher came out in 1996. This system really is meant to run early 2000s games, 2000, 2001, 2002. Uh, so it's kind of overkill for this game, but it this game plays perfectly on it. It's awesome. It loads fast. It's it's a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and hit enter and run the game. So uh, we're actually capturing this through a Datapath E1S capture card. It's a very good capture card for stuff like this. It can handle weird resolutions and refresh rates and things like that. Unfortunately, Scorcher has a tendency of bouncing between screen modes, it seems. Uh, and so you're going to see that no signal uh, message pop up uh, whenever we switch levels or where we go from this main menu here to gameplay. So that's a little cumbersome. But I just wanted to let you know, uh, it's just a quirk of capturing this, uh, you know, real hardware, you know, with certain games. Certain games are fine because they, they're I just consistent refresh rate, consistent resolution, but Scorcher seems to switch between multiple types, uh, which screws with the capture setup. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. So uh, before I actually start explaining things in the menu as usual, I'm gonna do the old Patreon shoutouts. So, uh, you know, I do this at the beginning of every Let's Play. So thanks everyone that is supporting my channel through places like Patreon. Uh, also, thanks to all the recent live stream super chatters on my live streams. I do live streams every Thursday night here on YouTube. So if you're around, feel free to stop in and say hello. So with that out of the way, uh, these are your options here. You do have two difficulty modes, normal and hard. I believe I did my Saturn playthrough on hard and hard is the annoying kind of hard. It's definitely more difficult than normal, but you get less time. The AI is a lot more aggressive. And with this game, the obstacle-based gameplay it revolves around, uh, the AI is just super cumbersome to deal with, so we're going to stick with normal. Um, they're still going to be cumbersome to deal with, but I think they're going to be a little bit easier to pass. And uh, once I pass the AI in the championship mode, we'll have free reign of the track for the most part. Um, you've got uh, configuration settings here. You've got controls. Uh, these are my keyboard, or this is my keyboard setup. Um, you've also got graphic settings. Uh, you can play full screen or widescreen or windowed. We're just going to do full screen. We're running this at 640 by 480, but you have a few other options below that. Uh, we're running a 16-bit color. You can also run a 256 color. So these are just things to keep in mind if you're trying to run this on an older system that's, you know, maybe not quite as capable. Uh, you can also change your textures to flat. So you can have a flat shaded polygon look, which is interesting. Uh, you can also just go into wireframe mode just because you can. It's really neat. Uh, you can't do that in the Saturn version, which is why I wanted to point that out. You can also actually turn off your backdrops, your cityscape, as well as your, your skybox, your clouds up in the air. But, you know, we don't want to do that. So, yeah, these options aren't really available in the Saturn version, which is one reason I wanted to point this out. Uh, you've also got various sound settings. You can uh, do a music test. But one thing that's great about PC Scorcher is that the music comes on a CD. It's CD audio. It's not uh, sampled uh, like it is. It's not um, driven by, uh, you know, the internal sound hardware uh, on your sound card or something like that. It is just straight CD audio. So you can pop this into your car, which I actually do. I have a separate copy of this game that's always in my car because I love the soundtrack. Um, so yeah, you can just play it right off the CD. It's really cool. And you can also view your track times and things like that too for each of the, uh, the six courses in the game. Uh, it also tracks your overall championship times. Um, that can't be correct. 3, 15, 38? Um, yeah, no, that's not right. I don't think it saved my last, uh, championship time. That's interesting. 
Yeah, because it should be at least seven or eight, ten, maybe fifteen minutes or something like that. But it's saying it's three minutes. That, yeah, there must be some glitch going on with how it's tracking championship times. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so okay. So with that out of the way, guys, we're gonna go ahead and just get into the game. And uh, hopefully I can do decently here. I actually, this is not the first time I tried to record this Let's Play. This is like take number five right now. Because I just keep flubbing things where I already play poorly. So, you know, cross your fingers for me. Let's hope for uh, some decent performance here. So, uh, yeah, you actually have multiple view modes in this game. Uh, sometimes what I like to do is play the first course on uh, in first person. Uh, I'm not going to actually do that. Uh, for me, the shift key is what actually changes your uh, your view settings, which is kind of nice. Um, and there we go, we're using a little bit of our boost power. So, how Scorcher works is uh, you have boost power, which is handled by uh, your green power-ups here. And then you have jump power, which is handled by the blue power-ups. And if you look on the right-hand side of the screen by your timer, uh, you'll notice that there's a, a thin green line going up the screen for your boost power, and then a smaller blue line going up the screen for your jump power. Now, there's actually a uh, boost pad there I've wanted to grab uh, right before the, uh, the checkpoint, but I keep missing it, and that's okay. As long as we get first place, that's really all I care about. And then once we beat the game, uh, I'll come back to some of these courses and try to demonstrate, you know, slightly, slightly better or more quote-unquote advanced play. Now, you can fall off courses in this game and it'll just uh, set you back at a, at a checkpoint nearby. And uh, so the only thing you lose uh, by falling off the course is just some time or maybe you'll lose a position or two. And, you know, if you want the best ending in the game, uh, you want to get first place uh, at the end of the at the end of the championship. So, you know, getting first place on each course will pretty much guarantee that. And if actually, you know, you can see the skybox up there, the clouds, the transparent clouds, you can actually uh, disable that. So that's uh, one of them. And then you'll notice the trees in the background. Uh, that'll turn into a cityscape on future levels, and you can disable that too. That's what those graphic options are. Uh, it's something to keep in mind. So, and there we go. We can enter our times, our initials, and this game just loads insanely fast. If you play the Sega Saturn version of the game, it takes a lot longer to get into each course. Um, so if if you have a PC capable of playing this game, um, you know, it is it is definitely... I don't want to say it's 100% the better, better way to play the game, because there are some really neat skips you can do in the Sega Saturn version that you can't do in this version, and I'll explain those later. And this is where the AI just gets on my nerves. Uh, notice that they're, they're always a little bit faster than you. Um, and they just, they bump into you. A lot of areas in this game are very claustrophobic. And, uh, you know, as such, you're going to slam into the AI in this game in moments like that, which is why getting ahead of the AI makes the game a lot more enjoyable. So now we're ahead of the AI, we're in first place, we're going to jump over this, jump over that, try to break a little bit to grab those power-ups. I always break right here as well, because it's extremely easy to clip the top of that tunnel, and when you clip the top of that tunnel, you get slowed down. And getting slowed down in this game unnecessarily is something I don't like to have happen. Uh, because one of the great things about uh, Scorcher is you get this real visceral kind of feeling when you get into the groove of things. It is extremely fast, um, and the way the physics feel, way, the way like the bouncing and the turning feels, it just feels very visceral, which, you know, those are my favorite uh, types of racing games. Lots of futuristic racing games feel that way. Um, you know, F-Zero X at higher levels, uh, higher... Uh, um, yeah, F-Zero-X at higher levels, uh, the Wipeout series, things like that, all f all have that that feeling. Scorcher even more so because of how the physics handle. You know, you're you're a ball rolling around on the playfield, and the physics are handled very well. The way you bounce around, the way your your the ball grips on the playfield, and and things like that. It's uh, really hard to describe until you play it and get into the groove of things. Now, I actually jumped twice, and I ran out of my uh, my jump power completely. It's not going to matter too much, because we don't have to jump again on this level. You only have to jump on that one section. Uh, but I wasn't really picking up any of the blue power-ups. And there we go, there's one. And if I wanted to, I could try to... Oops. Could try to jump over that, just for fun. Really hard to do consistently. Uh, and the Saturn version is a little bit easier for me. Uh, some things like that are definitely easier in the Saturn version. 
And there we go. So notice that you are timed in this game as well. And so, you know, if you get first place, you get an extra 10 seconds on the next course. Uh, if you get second, I think you only get an extra five seconds. And if that doesn't really matter that much when you're playing on the normal difficulty, it's mainly hard mode where that really makes a difference because you have a lot less time on hard mode. So, yeah, that was an okay course. Not as uh, good as my best time on on this recent computer so far, but that's okay. So, we again, we want to try to get past this AI, and again, it can be really frustrating to do so. And we're just going to try to use our jump power here to get over these jumps. Later on, once we have free reign of the course, uh, once we're past the AI, which we are now, we could actually just boost real quick and just automatically hop over a lot of these gaps. Oh, that's not good. That was actually really bad. I ended up getting stuck on that, which stopped me completely. But it's okay. We're still in first place. We're going to jump here, jump here. I'm going to take it a little bit slow right here so I can hit all this boost. And then what I like to do in this loop-de-loops, -loop, so the only loop-de-loop -loop in the game is hug that left wall. If you don't hug that left wall and boost at the same time, uh, you're going to end up falling backwards. And you, what's going to happen is you're going to end up falling off the course because of how the loop-de-loop -loop is uh, designed. It's... The loop-de-loop -loop is probably one of the worst designed parts of this game, but I was thinking to myself the other day, and I was thinking, you know, I can't imagine this game without the loop-de-loop, -loop, though. Like, you know, one side of me says it's terrible game design, um, but the other part of me says, well, when you when you understand how to get through it, it's interesting, and it makes it gives the game a really unique feel. So, I'm kind of torn on it. I do think it's best... Ooh, see? Look at that. Oof, we almost fell backwards and fell off the course. But when you make successful loop-de-loops without falling off to your to your death, uh, it's really satisfying. It's really satisfying. So I think I'm leaning more towards it. It 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 it's better being in the game. But it's one of those many things that that gives Scorcher a very oh okay that was interesting. I have never seen that before. It's one of those things that gives Scorcher a very high uh, difficulty curve uh, and learning curve, I should say. So. For one, new players have to get used to how the game handles. The physics, uh, like when you slow down like this, it is not very satisfying at all. Um, but as you get better at the game, and when, when it happens and you slow down completely like this, you're just like, okay, well, I slow down like this because it's because I'm not playing well. It's my fault. Um, and uh, so you know not to run into an object the way you did or, or bump into the AI the way you did. You know, there's constant learning going on when you play this game. Uh, nothing in this game, except for maybe the first course, <laughs> is is a freebie. Nothing in this game is a freebie. You have to get good at this game if you want to get the most out of it. And those are my favorite kinds of games. The games where um, putting in time and effort um, will get you the most out of the game. And that's the case with a lot of games, but there are a lot of games where the difficulty is kind of a gimme. Um, you know, you don't have to think about it that much. Scorcher is a game where you absolutely have to think about what you're doing. And I am not thinking about what I'm doing right now because I'm talking and playing at the same time and zoning out. Um, I've also got a really weird mic set up here when I do these uh, actual PC recordings. So it's not quite as convenient for me as it is when I'm uh, recording console stuff. The mic is kind of like just like in my face right now. and taking up like the bottom portion of my screen. So that's always kind of awkward. I know I'm making excuses, but uh, I'm also tired. It's been a long night at work. So, but there we go. We got the signal dropout and go ahead and enter our initials. Yeah, that's 20 seconds slower than my best time, which I got yesterday. So actually my best track times here aren't my best track times ever of all time because I used to play this game religiously back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, and I don't have any of those track times anymore. I don't even remember what they are, so. Um, but these times on here certainly are not the best uh, that I've ever done, not by a long shot. So, yeah, I when I so I first played Scorcher on the Sega Saturn uh, many many years ago. I got it uh, at Toys R Us, like I did many Saturn games. Uh, I got a Sega Saturn when they were 200 bucks, and Sega was doing the uh, three free games deal. And it was my primary next gen console at the time. And as many of you guys know, the Sega Saturn was not a very popular console on the market um, and there were there you know there were there were good and bad bad things to that the the bad is that the Saturn didn't get as many uh, of the high-profile third-party titles 
uh, especially not by the end of the 90s. In the early 90s, it got some, you know, it got Tomb Raider and, and Resident Evil and things like that. Um, but not a whole lot towards the, uh, the late 90s. But the good thing about that was that uh, lots of games would get liquidated very, very quickly. And by the end of the 90s, there were so many brand new unboxed $10 Saturn games that I just had a field day with it. And that's one reason I'm so quote-unquote experienced with the Sega Saturn is I used to buy a new game just about every week uh, when I was in high school. Uh, you know, back in the day because Saturn games were so cheap. And uh, Scorcher was one of those $10 purchases I picked up at Toys R Us. And, you know, it was a game I actually didn't even like that much at first because of the very, very high learning curve. It took me a, a very long time to get the hang of it. But once I did, it quickly became one of my favorite games of that era. And I still play it to this day. It's still one of my favorites of all time. Um, but, you know, there is a huge difficulty learning curve. Uh, which I think keeps a lot of people from truly enjoying this game. But once you get good at it, it is a lot of fun. So a lot of this stuff is kind of obvious here. I mean, you see gaps, you want to jump. On this part, you can sort of hug the left-hand side. I usually try to ignore this boost pad here, or if I hit it, I intentionally slow down. So I'm intentionally slowing down. And there are a bunch of different ways you can go through a lot of these sections. You'll notice that Scorcher is a very, like, most of the courses are very thin in this game. But despite that, you know, where they look like you can only go through a section one way, a lot of, a lot of parts of the game allow you to go through sections multiple ways. Um, so like this part right here, if I wanted to, I probably could have just sped up really fast and ended up making one jump instead of two. Right here, I can jump or I can hug the left-hand side of the wall. And the more you play this game, the more you pick up on tiny little, you know, minute ways to get through, uh, you know, sections of each course differently. And some some ways, some minute way, some minute ways are much more effective than others. So, all right, on the track five, so we're actually making decent progress here. I haven't been playing too horribly. Uh, at least better than my other Let's Play attempts uh, in recording this. I'm going to take the left-hand path here. There's also a boost pad right there. And that AI just went right off the course. And I'm okay with that because, as you as you probably noticed so far, the AI is actually really annoying in this game. Also, something I haven't noted is that when you use your boost in this game, you want to tap your boost just lightly because you use just a slight bit. And, uh, it's actually still very effective. Look at how fast I am now. Oh, and that was, that was a mistake. I, I actually tried getting slick there. I actually wasn't going to do that on this lap, but I'll, sh I'll show it on sub sub bleh, subsequent laps. So, you know, that's one of those, like, little minor shortcuts you can do. Um, generally, on that big jump, you're supposed to actually just fall down back onto the, uh, the city street. And then take a 90-degree left-hand turn. But uh, from that top platform, you can actually end up uh, boosting and then jumping and just cutting the, the, the turn completely, going over the building. And it's really tricky to get the hang of. We're going to actually go ahead and try it again right here. So boost. Oh, and I bounced off the top of the building and went over the other building on the other side. Uh, that can sometimes happen. And that's actually where going in the first person mode can help out a lot when it comes to doing skips. Now, it's a completely unnecessary skip. It's not necessary at all, but it is, I believe, faster. And it is fun. It's very stylish. So, oops, I missed the boost, so that's not good. We might not actually get it again. But let's go in the first person this time. I really like first person in Scorcher because it makes the whole experience feel a lot more immersive. And not many games uh, from this era could do that for me. But Scorcher could get uh, very, very immersive. And there we go. So that's sort of it, but that wasn't a very good cut uh, because I didn't have any boost power. So let's actually switch back to third person. Uh, you can also jump over this part right here, which isn't really uh, necessary. I don't think it's any faster per se. Uh, maybe if I had more boost power, it could be faster, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, this part right here, you don't want to be flying here at top speed, otherwise you'll end up hitting the top of that tunnel, and you'll end up getting reflected back into the pit. Lots of little things like that. You'll notice there's also a boost pad on the right there. I always skip it. You can also go to the left here, 
where the AI is and to make another boost pad appear. But where's the boost pad? I thought it was supposed to be on the, the this right here, but apparently not. Um, I don't go for that. I go for the right hand side, which gives you actual boost power. Um, power up power that you can use. Boost ammunition, I should say. And one thing that's really great about playing the uh, the PC version at the high resolution is you can actually make out the texture work. Like it says Xerinx there, which is the actual development studio that worked with Scavenger. Uh, it was under Scavenger. Um, if you play this on Saturn, which runs at the lowest resolution, uh, it's a lot harder to make out these signs and things like that. So it's one of the cool things about playing the PC version of the game, is you get to appreciate all the work put into the graphics. So, keep in mind that this came out the same year as Quake, um, and there weren't that many fully 3D polygonal games um, before 1996 uh, on, on PC. Um, and Scorcher is just a really great looking game for the year. I mean, for one, like, it's, uh, it's 2D assets are very stylish, which I've always enjoyed about this game. Um, but its texture work is actually quite solid, and uh, the geometry is, is really good as well for the, for the year. Um, a lot of people, I think, actually don't know about the PC version of the game. Uh, they're just familiar with the Saturn version, which came out the next year. Saturn version came out in 1997. Um, but yeah, PC version came out in 1996, and, uh, you know, the year of Quake. And, uh, it's, it looks fantastic. I think actually at 640 by 480 in particular, it's actually aged quite well. Um, part of that I think is also how you'll notice, like, like the track, uh, fades out at the end a little bit. Uh, could be a draw distance issue. You'll notice a little bit of pop in on certain parts, like on this part here. Um, but for the most part, that's actually masked very well uh, on most parts of the game. And uh, because of the, the post-apocalyptic theme, it actually works. Because the game is dark and moody and, and, and gritty. That sort of thing. So it actually works out in the game's favor. So this is the last course in the game called The Spiral. It is by far the most difficult course. You'll notice that it is very, very thin for the most part. These little humps here, you can try to boost your way over. You can also try to jump over them. Uh, you want to just try to figure out a strategy, which one works best for you. A lot of times jumping over them works best for me, but you can just boost over them. But you have to be very careful because you can just fly off the track if you, uh, if you boost incorrectly. This part right here, uh, what I do is I try to take it relatively slow. And uh, I definitely want those boost, those boost power-ups. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna... Okay, there's some more boost, not boost, but jump, uh, jump ammo right here. There's mandatory platforming at this part, so... This is definitely probably the most platforming, platforming intensive level, uh, in the game as well. Uh, there's actually a gap in the course right there, so you have to watch out for that. There's some trollish level design, um, but once you get the hang of things and you, you learn the game, it's, uh, it's not too bad to deal with. Um, it's much more, it's much worse on hard mode, where the AI is a little more frustrating, especially on, like, parts like this. It's very difficult to get past the AI, because there's just not much room. And jumping isn't really a viable option to get over them, because you're on a hill. Uh, so your jumping isn't quite as effective as it would be if you're on flat land. Uh, flat ground. And here's a good example right there. Oh, I managed to get past the AI without a problem. That's good. All right, so there should be more boost power here. There is actually a glitch in the game where sometimes your uh, your jump and boost replenishment don't appear, and I'm not quite sure why that happens, but I've, I've noticed that multiple times in my practice sessions, and I remember it happening, ooh, back in the day. Okay, I have to fall off. I'm out of jump ammo. That was actually bad. So, fortunately, when you fall off in this, you will get uh, some jump ammo back. You do get a tiny bit of boost just to get you back up the speed. Um, but I actually had to force myself off the track, and that was my fault, because I wasn't paying attention to, uh, you know, my jump ammo. I wasn't paying attention at all, unfortunately, so... Let's go ahead and boost up here. Try to take it a little bit faster. This is actually a really, really intense course, though, if you try to play quickly. Like, watch me play this next section right here. Let's go fast down here. It's very intense. Oh, man, that's... <laughs> it's very intense, but also very difficult to stay on the course. But if you can keep it up, and it's one of the most satisfying, uh, I think, futuristic racing experiences you can have. 
Because as much as I like, you know, stuff like Wipeout and F-Zero, uh, they don't ever feel as visceral as this game does. Um, with how it gets its, uh, you know, how it handles its motion and inertia and stuff like that. Uh, there's just really nothing quite like it. It's really, really excellent once you get into it and get the hang of things. So that's it. That is actually the uh, the last course in the game. That is the spiral. So what I'll do is I guess I'll just uh, let this ending play out. Uh, the ending is kind of long. It's mostly just a wall of text. But uh, since we've gone through the whole game, I'll go ahead and uh, let that play out. But yeah, Scorcher uh, to me is a really fun game. But like I said, it's got a really, really steep learning curve. And I can understand why a lot of people that have played it haven't really been able to get into it. I do think if you're going to get into the game, uh, the PC version is the way to go because I think it's a lot easier to pick up and play. It's a lot easier to get the hang of the controls. One of the reasons for that is the Saturn version has uh, light steering on the D-pad and then the, uh, the shoulder keys are heavy steering. And, you know, when you play racing games uh, from that era, like even Wipeout that uses mainly a D-pad, you use the D-pad primarily, and then you use the hard steering selectively. Well, Scorcher is the other way around. You use the light steering selectively, or never. You don't even need it at all. And you need to use the hard steering primarily. And the game doesn't convey that to you. It doesn't convey that that's how the game is supposed to be played. Well, the PC version fixes that, and just assigns uh, both hard steering and light steering to the exact same key. So there's only one kind of steering by default in the PC version. You can make, you can assign separate keys to the light steering, but there's no reason to. Just use the hard steering at all times, 100% of the time. And uh, the game is a lot easier to pick up as a result. I remember when I first played the Saturn version many years ago, I was focusing on the D-pad. I was like, my, my, my character isn't doing anything. It was useless, borderline useless. Um, and that was one of the things that kept me from enjoying the game is uh, I, I felt like the controls were really limiting what I could do and then I figured out the uh, You know the hard steering both left and right on the shoulder keys Well again the PC version is just you know They're mapped to the same key to start so you don't even have to get over that 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 mental hurdle um, So Scorcher is, is different in many ways from other uh, racing games. It's unconventional in many ways, but the PC version helps I guess you could say streamline that a little bit so it's easier to get into. I think reviews from the time actually reflect that as well. So the Sega Saturn version got mediocre reviews like fives and sixes and whatnot. Uh, the PC version was getting like sevens and eights. Like people that reviewed the PC version 96 actually enjoyed it quite a bit uh, compared to the Saturn version that was reviewed a year later. Now the Saturn version also has some downsides. You know, it has more, you know, greater load times. Um, lower resolution. The big issue with the Saturn version is the frame rate. You know, mostly it's 30 frames a second, but it dips a lot. And it, it's, it doesn't do frame skipping. It does actual slowdown where, where things actually like feel like you're running through mo mo molasses, um, which isn't a bad thing. I don't mind it. Uh, I've, I've gotten used to it, but it is jarring, uh, you know, compared to this, where it was basically buttery smooth the entire time. Now, how buttery smooth this is going to be is dependent on your PC setup, your, well, in this case, retro PC setup uh, in this day and age. But I think anyone getting into retro PCs uh, will probably, they'll probably have a PC power more powerful enough uh, to play this game perfectly. Um, but you could run it on like a 486, you know, DX or something like that, 66 megahertz, and, uh, you know, it would probably actually still work fine. Uh, if you played the DOS version at uh, maybe 320 by, by 240 or something like that. I don't have a way of testing that. The slowest machine I have is a Pentium 200. Um, but I will actually have to, to, to try that too. Back in the day, it worked fine on the Pentium 200, but I had to run at the lowest resolution. I couldn't run at 640 by 480, otherwise it, it actually got really choppy. So but maybe at 4666 actually probably isn't a good idea. But if you got a, at least a, a low-end Pentium, you should be fine on the lowest resolution MS-DOS mode. The Windows version, I think, uh, requires a little bit more juice, uh, so to say, uh, to uh, to run smoothly. But that's what we're running right now. We're running the Windows version. So yeah, that's that. Uh, and if you were actually reading the credits as I was talking, there's actually some uh, some fun stuff in there. Like they say, uh, if you if you beat uh, Subterranea or Red Zone in the Sega Genesis, you are awesome. 
And those are two other games developed by this same studio, Xerinx. Um, so there's some some fun little history there too. And they have a shout out to Lemon, which Lemon was another studio under Scavenger that developed Amok, another Sega Saturn in PC title. Uh, Amok handle uh, Amok, I should say, uh, ended up a lot better on Saturn than Scorcher, like performance wise. It it runs at a really smooth frame rate on Saturn, uh, where Scorcher Scorcher is quite playable on Saturn. You can watch my let's play of it, but uh, but it also slows down a lot, whereas a muck does not. Uh, but Jesper Kid, uh, a now well known uh, you know video game musician and film musician, uh, did the uh, the music for all the Xerinx games, and uh, he also did the music for the Lemon game, uh, a muck that I just talked about. So. Uh, if you like sort of uh, techno and side trance soundtracks from the 90s, you definitely want to check out these soundtracks. Scorcher in particular. Amok is a little more atmospheric and uh, a little more gritty. I mean, Scorcher is, is pretty gritty too, but Scorcher actually has uh, a lot of really fast rhythms, and on track two in particular, it's got some good melody. So, um, but all right, so what I'm going to do here now is. Uh, Let's mess around with the, uh, I don't know, let's let's do the, the practice mode real quick. And I'll just try to talk about a few things. So, practice mode, uh, it actually looks like you don't have to uh, race against opponents, which is great. Now, one of the things that kind of sucks about practice mode in this is that you're still timed. And you still end the course after four laps, which is actually pretty annoying. In the Saturn version, when you play practice mode, uh, you can play as many laps as you want. And then you can also, uh, you have as much time as you want as well. So, every, you know, it's basically an infinite play. So this is kind of how I do the first course. Uh, I basically, sometimes I like to go into first person mode because it makes this upcoming jump here a little bit easier. So one thing you can do is you can actually sort of uh, cut the corner there. Let's see if we can demonstrate it again. Okay, that's not a, not a good way to do it. Let's see if we can, uh, okay, no way to actually reset here, so... It's one of the things I, I do like that they added in the Saturn version. Is that they added a uh, reset option, so you can just hit start, hit reset. Let's go ahead and go back in the first person. So I do want to show you some cool little tricks here that you can do. Um, you know, as long as you've got speed and whatnot. So let's try to speed up a little bit and not slam into the walls, because slamming into the walls slows you down. Or at least catching the corners in particular. But this boost pad right here can be a little trollish. But if you're fast enough, you can sort of do a uh, Doom style jump and just uh, cut that corner, which I actually failed to do. I failed to demonstrate. But we'll see if we can do it this time, hopefully, with the help of this boost pad. One of the things about Scorcher is that. There we go. That's more like it. It's a little bit like that. But unfortunately, as a result, I ended up missing the, uh, the boost power ups, uh, which is bad. So let's see if we can do it a little bit better here. So Scorcher has a lot of like little humps and bumps in the, uh, you know, its courses. And as a result, it sometimes it's a little difficult to actually hit the, uh, the boost pads properly. And that's one thing I wish was smoothed out a little bit in this game. Uh, because I feel things like boost pads shouldn't be a crapshoot. They should pretty much be a guaranteed thing. Where, you know, if you see the boost pad, you hit it. 100% guaranteed every time, but in Scorcher, it's a crapshoot. You really need to hit all those little green arrows to get, you know, the, the most effective boost. Uh, but because of all, like, the little bumps uh, and, and humps in the, the tracks, uh, you'll end up, like, hopping up into the air just slightly, and it won't register the, the little arrows. So, um, let me think of another course that we can try. I wanted to try to demonstrate uh, a couple other things. So, actually, I wanted to actually demonstrate uh, getting... Um, basically pushed back, um, for no reason. Uh, not really no reason, but... So, in the Sega Saturn version of the game, there are a lot of skips you can do where, um, you'll, say, jump over an object completely, like, say, jump over that tunnel and then land back in it. Um, in the PC version, you can only go so high off the track before... Uh, the game thinks that you've gone out of bounds, and that's actually one of the frustrating things of the PC version. Uh, one of those parts is right here, but I'm going to actually try to demonstrate it on the next lap. Instead of demonstrating it on the first lap, because first lap, I'm just not fast enough. I also want to switch over to the, uh, the first person viewpoint. So you can also try to speed up here. Speeding up here is extremely risky. You can fly out the course, but if you get it just right, look... Oh, I missed that. I still hit the top of that, that, uh, that grating. 
but you can really see what sort of a, a speed kind of rhythm you can get into with this game. All right, so let's actually switch back over to uh, first person so I can try to demonstrate this part. Fortunately, that actually put us far back enough so I can try to get these boost power-ups again. All right, so what we're gonna do is come up here, boost, and then jump. And I went too high. I went too high, and it treated it as an out-of-bounds. Um, whereas in the Sega Saturn version, it wouldn't do that. In the Sega Saturn version, you could go pretty much as high as you want, and uh, then you could land in that tunnel. Even though that tunnel has a ceiling, uh, how Scorcher treats ceilings is that you will clip through them uh, on the way down. And same with tunnels. There's There are a few fun things you can do in the Sega Saturn version. When you jump over a tunnel, and you end up landing back in the tunnel if you, if you aim your, your bike just right. Oops! See, <laughs> this is what happens too when uh, you are not well practiced. And actually, it looks like I didn't jump high enough there, so it didn't uh, clip. It, it didn't count as an out-of-bounds, which was good. But yeah, this is also one reason I play in the third-person mode a lot of times, because... Um, you know, it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, sometimes it's easier to guide your movement in first person. Other times it's easier to guide your movement in third person. And uh, trying to figure out what parts are easier than others based on the, the camera uh, is also important in this game. So let's go ahead and try this again and jump. Okay, well, I'm not jumping high enough, which is good, so I'm not clipping through. But if we actually go back to the, uh, the first course again, I should have actually demonstrated this when we were actually uh, in the first course, but since things load so quickly here, like I don't even have to worry about, uh, I don't even have to worry about, you know, all the load times and stuff like that. So we can just skip around and I can explain whatever I want to you guys without uh, really any issue here. So, um, but okay, so we're gonna do this one more time. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this boost pad and what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up clipping Okay, it actually didn't register that time. I didn't go high enough up, which is good, because that's actually the ideal sort of uh, boost, is you want a nice smooth boost like that. But let's try this again. And it's not registering again. That's good. That's actually two really good boosts, but I don't have any boost power, so we're not... Uh I think part of the issue is I need some boost power. Let's actually get some boost power so I can try to demonstrate it. And I jumped over those. So that's another one of those things about Scorcher is, you know, if you if you are at a high speed and you hit a hill, you'll you'll fly off that hill. You'll you'll you know you'll gain some air. Now the problem with gaining air unnecessarily, bam, there it is. See, that's what I'm talking about. That wouldn't happen in the Sega Saturn version of the game. So in the Saturn version, I hit the boost pad and I boost at the same time, and I go crazy fast, so much to where I can almost cut that corner. Now, without even driving the corner, it's it's really interesting. And so that's one of the downsides to the PC version of Scorcher, is that um, you know you don't have that uh, that flexibility and that luxury. So we're gonna actually mess around a little bit with Track Five real quick, and then that'll probably be the end of the uh, the Let's Play. So um, so I want to show you the uh, the sort of the building skip at the end. And again, on this part right here, you can actually jump over that. That actually might end up being faster because uh, you have to slow down there. You have to slow down. Ooh, we missed our boost, so I'm not. I'm probably not gonna be able to do the uh, the building skip on this one. It's okay. We'll just loop around one more time. This is a really cool looking level too. I really love how it loops and curves and tilts and and weaves and whatnot. And you got that crane halfway through. It's just really cool. The game is uh, very uh, subtly cinematic in its 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 own unique way. And uh, the tracks have a tendency of curving so much that things like the limitations, like the uh, the pop in and whatnot, uh, usually aren't, uh, aren't usually aren't issues. And again, if you look in the distance, you'll notice in a lot of cases, you know, the game is, uh, um, you know, it fades in, you know, at the uh, the edge of the course, and so it just it feels very dark. It feels very gritty. It feels, it feels appropriate for this atmosphere. So let's go ahead and try to do this jump here. So I'm gonna wait and start boosting once I hit this right here. Jump over the building, just like that. And then, because you do that, you end up speeding up that hill like crazy. And I can jump over here like this. 
And this is where Scorcher just becomes really awesome. When you get into these grooves and you learn these tricks and you keep your speed up, uh, again, oh, see, I, I like, like I explained before, I went too fast there and I hit the top of the uh, the tunnel or the uh, the overpass, and uh, so that actually hurt me there, it hurt my my speed. Now we can wait, boost, jump. Oh, see, I messed it up though. So you got to get it just right, otherwise you end up doing something dumb like that and falling over and uh, going off the course. And now we're really slow, and so we've lost all of our momentum and whatnot. Uh, so actually, one thing I wanted to demonstrate here is, um... Let's see, let's go ahead and load up this course one more time, and then this will pretty much be the end of the Let's Play, so... Um, one fun thing I always like to show off in this game is, um... On track 5, you can actually jump into the stairwells of the apartment complexes on the side, I'm guessing they're apartments. But so what we're gonna do here is actually just break completely. And this is one of the fun things about Scorcher. You can actually just stop and kind of do whatever you want. So we're gonna actually go into first person mode here. Kind of like that. And see if we can get in here. It's gonna take us a bunch of tries. Oh, there we go. We got it. <laughs> so now we're we're actually in on the stairwell. And you can actually work your way up a little bit. This is one thing I love about early 3D engines is a lot of times you've got this flexibility uh, to just goof around. And uh, you can totally do that in Scorcher, although now we're stuck because we don't have any uh, boost power. Oh, we can fall off like that. So there's actually another one over here as well. I've never been able to get on it. Yeah, that one right there. I don't think I've ever been able to get on it. But we're going to actually run out of time as well, so... I might have gotten on it before. Oh, that was close. Yeah, this is one thing I really like about, say, the original Quake as well, is there's a lot of room to just kind of goof off. It's a lot more fun in the Saturn version, though, because you have unlimited time. Um, you have unlimited time uh, and laps in the Saturn version, so you can just sit there all day and just have a field day and try to figure out exploits and... Uh, yeah, figure out exploits. Um, and yeah, it hasn't registered my, my best championship time still. I don't really understand how it calculates that. Uh, doesn't really make any sense. Maybe it's just calculating the last course and that's it. And uh, not all the courses in the game. But uh, yeah, guys, that is pretty much going to do it. That is Scorcher for the PC. I hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. I know it's actually a little bit different than some of my other Let's Plays because there's a lot more experimentation going on and things like that. But nonetheless, I hope you still enjoyed this playthrough. Uh, if you've never played Scorcher before, I do recommend trying it out. I think it's a really fantastic futuristic racing game that doesn't get enough love, and uh, it should. Now, again, like I said, it's got a huge learning curve, uh, but once you start getting good at the game, it becomes just uh, the, the kind of visceral fun that it is when you play at top speed in particular is just unmatched. Like, it, it's it's very unique. It it's just kind of kind of stands on its own in that regard, so... But yeah, really awesome game. I do recommend checking it out. Even if you have to play just the Saturn version, you know, it is there and it's still cheap today. You know, that's the other cool thing. And if you like the music, you can pick up the PC CD version and uh, pop it in your CD player, rip the MP3s or rip the, the tracks to MP3s. It's just great. It's good stuff. So, uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for us, guys. Uh, if you like this video, uh, you know, feel free to give it a thumbs up or if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I've got hundreds of Let's Plays on this channel and many more to come. For all you guys already subbed, thank you for your continued support. And until the next one, take it easy.